Acids are synthesized. A malinate contributes to the growing chain. To carbon seven times around the game, a game. For saturated acylates, there's lots of NADPH that you must obtain when acids are synthesized. Palmitic acid made this way all gets released. Desaturases act to make omega-3s. The finished products, big and small, form esters with the glycerol. So you get obese when acids are synthesized. That's not funny, is it? <laughs> okay. All right. So that's what happens with making fatty acids. And let's see here. Where am I? Okay. Well, uh, we've made fatty acids, and the song has told you we're going to take those fatty acids and we're going to make fats. That's what I'm going to show you right here. Okay? Fats are made by combining fatty acids with glycerol. Those reactions are called esterifications because esters are created in the process. Now, these figures, I apologize today, they're all very tiny. But if you look up here, you can see a glycerol. Glycerol is a very simple structure. It's carbon, carbon, carbon. And each carbon has a hydroxyl. So it's carbon, 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 hydroxyl, hydroxyl, hydroxyl. To make a fat, we're going to ultimately put a fatty acid on each one of those carbons. Okay? Ultimately, that's what we're going to do. We do it in sort of a backwards fashion. We first put a phosphate onto the glycerol. That phosphate is required by the enzymes to put the other fatty acids on there. So what we do is we put a phosphate on to one of the end glycerols. Then we put fatty acids on to the other two carbons. And that makes a compound called phosphatidic acid. Then in the next step, that phosphate that got put on gets taken off. And that last fatty acid is put on. So the order of things is glycerol. Glycerol gets a phosphate. The two free carbons get fatty acids. The phosphate gets taken off, and the third fatty acid gets put on. Gesundheit. Gesundheit again. It's allergy season, isn't it? Yes, sir. So which... Which step needs that phosphate to put? Is it to put the two? So to start putting the fatty acids on there. Yep. So what about the third fatty acid? They can just do that. Acid. Well, the third fatty acid is a different enzyme. So yes, the third because th that phosphate comes off and then the third fatty acid goes on. Okay. So that's how we make a fat. It's very simple to make a fat, maybe too simple, and uh, as a consequence, we get fat. Fat, as I said uh, last time, is stored in special tissues in the body called adipose tissue. And that's their uh, fat, storing of fat is important because fat is not water soluble. So you have to have some specialized structures for storing that away and that's why we see specialized cells for storing fat. Okay, so that's how we make fat. Fats of course are called triisoglycerols. When you hear triisoglycerol and you hear fat and you hear oil, those terms are all used interchangeably. If you didn't take off the phosphate, would it be a phospholipid? I, I should have paid him to say this because, in fact, that's the transition to my next thing. Okay, So it is a phospholipid. Phosphatidic acid is a phospholipid because it's a lipid, lipid that contains phosphate. Phosphatidic acid is a branch point between the synthesis of fats and the synthesis of the glycerol phospholipids, which we've already talked about. So I'm going to show you how to do that. We're just going to do it very simply. We're not going to worry about the details. Okay, here is phosphatidic acid. Here's a big honking intermediate called CDP diisoglycerol. What happens is CTP combines with this phosphatidic acid to make this guy. That is an important intermediate. Then we swap out the CDP for other things. This can be ethanolamine, this can be serine, it can be a variety of things. But that CDP goes on there and then pops back off. Why do you suppose CDP goes on there? 
What have you seen previously that is like this kind of a reaction? Earth to class, earth to class. Come in, class. Have you seen a nucleotide combined with anything else in the class? Nobody's seen a nucleotide combined with anything else in the class? No? <laughs> UTP glucose, exactly. When we were synthesizing glycogen, UTP combined with glucose to make UTP glucose. Why did it do that? Activated intermediate. Very good. It's just like pulling teeth. I should, I should be a dentist up here. Okay? That makes an activated intermediate. And what does an activated intermediate do? Donates part of its energy that you're warming up. This is good. You don't want to have your teeth pulled, I can tell. Okay? It donates its, the energy of the intermediate to, to something else. In this case, it's donating the energy of, of its bond to put this whole big thing onto something else. In this case, ethanolamine, serine, or some other molecule. The product of that is a phospholipid that's going to be in our membranes. So these are the glycerophospholipids because they have a glycerol backbone. And glycerophospholipid is more specific than phospholipid because there are phospholipids that have no glycerol in them. I'll show you one in a second. Okay? So glycerophospholipid is a more specific name because it refers to those phospholipids that have glycerol in them. Okay. Well, um, blah, blah, blah. We'll go through all that. The sphingolipids. Okay? You guys have seen the sphingolipids before. Sphingolipids do not have glycerol in them. They're synthesized by a different mechanism. And interestingly, look what we start with in making a sphingolipid. We start with palmito wheel coa. Palmitate. Palmitate linked to a coa. We join that palmitate to serine, and when we do that, we start the synthesis of sphingolipids. So palmitate or palmito wheel coa, I usually take either one, is uh, along with serine are the building blocks of sphingolipids. If we put a phosphate at this position down here, and you don't need to worry about the position, but if you put a phosphate onto there, you can make sphingomyelin. We've talked about that. That is a sphingolipid that is, that is a phospholipid. Most of the sphingolipids are not phospholipids, but sphingomyelin is. Sphingomyelin, you may recall, is found in the membranes of nerve cells. Very abundant in the membranes of nerve cells. OK, blah, blah. Questions about that? I must be crystal clear today, or you guys really are have been hypnotized, one or the other. Cholesterol. We're just on a roll. Let's make some cholesterol. Hallelujah, huh? Making fatty acids so we can make fats. Now we're going to make cholesterol so we can plug up our arteries. Cholesterol is a, a, a very interesting compound in its synthesis. It's a great big thing. Okay? It's a great big thing. What's the M and the C? That great big thing can be made completely using acetyl coas. Completely. Every carbon in cholesterol comes from acetyl coa. The M stands for the methyl group of acetyl coa, and the C stands for the carboxyl group of acetyl coa. Every single one of those comes from acetyl coa. So if I ask you on an exam what the building blocks of cholesterol are, I hope you will tell me acetyl coa, because that's all it takes. Let's look at that. Okay? Let's look at how that happens. There's acetyl coa. <clears throat> We can take acetyl coas and join them together. If we take two of them and join them together, how many 
carbons are we going to have in that molecule? Well, you can do the math. We're going to have four, right? If I take those four and I split them in half, what do I get? I get two acetyl coas, right? What have we split in class to get two acetyl coas? What's that? No? There's a, there's a process that I've talked about recently where the last step of the process, you split a four carbon molecule into two pieces to get acetyl coas. It's the last step of beta oxidation. The last step of beta oxidation, you've got a four carbon molecule, you split it in half. What does the splitting in beta oxidation? Thiolase. This is the reversal of the thiolase reaction. I told you thiolase was involved in another reaction. This is the reaction it's involved in. Okay. We put two of these guys together, we make a four carbon, we add a third one, and we make a six carbon molecule. That six carbon molecule is called mevalonate. And mevalonate can be decarboxylated. There's a series of reactions that happen to make a five carbon molecule called isoprene. So you see there's been some rearrangements that have happened. Okay. Cholesterol is made in the endoplasmic reticulum. Okay. Now, there's an intermediate in going from here to here called HMG-CoA. And I'll show you another metabolic pathway that has that in a minute. Okay. HMG-CoA. HMG-CoA is a branch point between the synthesis of cholesterol and the synthesis of ketone bodies. I'll show you those in a minute. The ketone bodies are also made from acetyl-CoA. And they use the same first couple of steps. Okay. The enzyme that converts HMG-CoA into these guys over here, the isoprenes, is called HMG-CoA reductase. That's an enzyme I want you to know the name of. HMG-CoA reductase, I'm not showing you the reaction right now, I'm not going to show you the reaction, but I will tell you its importance. Its importance is it catalyzes the first step past this in the synthesis of cholesterol. HMG-CoA reductase is important because it is the only regulated enzyme in cholesterol biosynthesis. You notice I like regulated enzymes. It's the only regulated enzyme in cholesterol biosynthesis. Cholesterol, cholesterol biosynthesis, or I'm sorry, hmg coa reductase is inhibited by feedback inhibition. If I tell you that much, what do you tell me is probably going to inhibit hmg coa reductase? Cholesterol. Cholesterol will feedback inhibit that enzyme. If everything is working well, it turns that enzyme off. It doesn't always work well. People have cholesterol problems, and we'll talk a little bit more about those later. That's not relevant for right here. But something that is relevant for right here are drugs called statins. Anybody know anybody taking statins? Lovastatin? Anybody know anybody with high cholesterol? Okay. Well, if you have high cholesterol, you probably know about statins because statins are drugs that are very, very effective at lowering your body's cholesterol level. HMG, I'm sorry, statins inhibit HMG-CoA reductase. Statins, S-T-A-T-I-N. They're, they're a class of molecules. There's a whole bunch of them. They inhibit HMG-CoA reductase. So they stop the synthesis of cholesterol. Okay. Now, I think what I'm going to do is I'm just going to very quickly tell you what happens, and then I'm going, to, I'm going to finish that tomorrow, okay? So you'll hear this again. Isoprenes are what are called five-carbon building blocks of cholesterol. They're five